Hello, YouTube. What's going on? Today we'll be talking about Tesla AI Day. Let's do this. Oh, wait, wait. Shoot, we're not recording the screen. We're just recording our faces. Oh. My bad. Regnets offer a very nice design space for neural networks. So what are what are Regnets in this case? What are they offering? Uh, in this case, they're using a specialized version of ResNet called RegNet. There's a paper about this, which is specified here. Designing um, network design Designing spaces. network spaces we should cover in our future videos. Because they allow you to very nicely trade off latency and uh, accuracy. Now, these Regnets give us as an output a number of features at different resolutions and different scales. We then like to process this with feature pyramid networks. In our case, we like to use bi-FPNs. Just look at the pixels at this. It's not very clear right. what this thing is. But given the context, it's like, oh, well, yes. most likely that's a car. Right. After a bi-FPN and a feature fusion across scales, we then go into task-specific heads. Very quickly, we discovered that we don't just want to detect cars. We want to do a large number of tasks. We want to do object detection with each of these so like right. object detection, traffic light detection, lane detection. CLS is the class. Yeah, classification. Classification. I think regularization. Regularization. The attribute detection. Red car or is it a white car? We call these uh, therefore hydronets, and these are the heads of the hydra. Three advantages in this kind of uh, architecture. So you don't have to run like this whole part of the pipeline for, for each, each one of these, these tasks. Things. Right. Right. You amortize the forward pass inference. Uh, in the car at test time. This decouples all of the tasks so we can individually work on every one task in isolation because there's this bottleneck here in features. Um, what we do fairly often is that we actually cache these features to disk and when we are doing these fine-tuning uh, workflows, we only fine-tune from, from the cached features up and only fine-tune the heads. So most often mm -hmm. in terms of our training workflows, you, we will do an end-to-end -end training run once in a while where we train everything jointly. Then we cache the features um, at the multi-scale feature level, and then we fine-tune off of that for a while. But as we worked towards FSD, we quickly found that this is not enough. So where this first started to break was when we started to work on Smart Summon. We very quickly discovered that tuning the occupancy tracker and all of its hyperparameters was extremely complicated. You don't want to do this explicitly by hand in C++. So here's a way of illustrating the issue. They look great in the image, but once you cast them out into the vector space, things start to look really terrible. Since the angle is like so sharp, any depth, I think it cannot like make it very continuous. So that's why you see like these lines here. Right. You can see like the lines further out. They're pretty much just guesswork. So we have this intuition that what we'd like to do instead is we'd like to take all of the images and simultaneously feed them into a single neural net and directly output in vector space.